Welcome to Groucho's Garage. I'm David Wimberly. I'm introducing an improved recipe for molasses bonded sand that includes calcium bentonite. The bentonite seems to make the sand stronger and allows the sand to function better in conditions of increased humidity. Before we get started, remember that whatever process you use, metal casting is intrinsically dangerous. Also, foundry sand is a very complex subject, and I'm just presenting a recipe that I've developed by trial and error. In Pakistan, there are probably lots of impurities, including clays and the various sands they start out with. In contrast, we are starting with clean sand and then washing and drying it. The recipe is by weight, 100 parts dried washed sand, 8 parts molasses, 4 parts calcium bentonite, and 2.5 parts water. The water is included only to make it easy to mix. I used extra fine filter sand and washed it in 4 or 5 changes of water. The molasses can be purchased from a grocery store or a feed store. Make sure your bentonite is calcium bentonite, not sodium bentonite. You can mix the sand with your hands, a spoon, or some sort of power mixer. It's not difficult as long as you've added a little water. The finished mixture will have to dry substantially before it gets to a workable consistency. If the air is dry, you can just spread the sand out and allow it to dry. Otherwise, you may have to use an oven or put the sand in a car that's exposed to the sun. Let's discuss some of the advantages of this sand recipe. The ingredients are readily available, inexpensive, non-toxic, and easily mixed. The mixed sand is reusable, easily molded, capable of making both molds and cores, strong enough but not too strong, hardenable, adequately permeable, does not require special handling, and often does not require draft or taper in the pattern. Overall, I am very pleased with this recipe. The sand is very dynamic and it seems alive. It's forgiving and easy to work with. It's confidence inspiring and once you get a batch of this sand mixed up and properly dried, you will definitely want to make a casting. Let me say just a bit about parting compound. At this time, I'm recommending something like powdered turmeric or paprika. These can both be bought in bulk and they provide a good color contrast with the sand. Commercial parting may be ground limestone and described as non-silica, but it may not be silica free, so I recommend using it only if you are working outdoors and using a respirator. The following casting will provide a good demonstration of the workability of the sand, producing a moderately complex casting. Okay, let's make a casting. This is the 3D printed pattern. It's sort of a thick partial spherical shell with some projections and you can see the parting line in Sharpie. I've already put sand in the drag, which is the bottom half of the mold, and I'm just firming it up, and I have enough sand for consolidating it, compressing it. And I'm using an axle, a piece of an axle, which is heavy, but you can just use a piece of wood or plywood. I'm now screeding off the top to a level position and then adding some sand to be integrated back in there to compress it more. So I'm compressing this a little more with the piece of axle that I'm rolling it and of course you can do all of this in many different ways in different orders. Now I'll scrape the sides and then roll it again to a final flat level. You'll notice I've nailed a board to the bottom of the drag so I'm going to sink this pattern down into the surface of the drag and first I'm excavating some material. Okay, I'm going to add some sand inside the pattern there and uh, 
I don't need to use a parting on this because the pattern is made of PLA and the, the sand doesn't stick to it. So I'm just trying to get it level with the dark lines which represent the parting line. It doesn't have to be perfectly level but it kind of looks nice. I'm not happy with the front of this pattern. I should have put a little more sand in that area under the curved edge. Now I'm consolidating the sand under the pattern to make sure there are no voids and compacting the sand again with the rammer. I'm getting ready to use a roller to compact it a little more and it's going to take a while to fettle this particular mold. Lots of futzing around but you want to get it right. So rolling at a final time, hopefully, and cutting a couple of alignment divots, consolidating those, wrapping the pattern, removing the pattern. I'm removing it so that uh, I can check the void that's left. I don't want any imperfections in that void. And I'm carefully getting it out of there, and the void looks perfect, so I'm replacing the pattern and ready to ram up the cope or the top half of the mold. Before that, I'm gonna sprinkle some parting, in this case, ginger. It does make you sneeze, so don't rely on that particular parting, but it worked fine. I'm putting a sprue in there, which is just a tube with some polystyrene in the end of it to keep it from getting filled up with sand. Now I'm adding sand and making sure it's packed into the corners and around the pattern, but not too uh, aggressively packed so as to disturb the existing pattern. Now it's pretty well loaded in there and I'll start consolidating after I've centered it with a piece of plywood and I'm using my rammer made out of an axle. Adding a little additional sand to consolidate the uh, co-path a little more thoroughly. You can see I'm moving that sprue a little so it tilts a little to the left. Not ideal, but not really a problem. Doing some final rolling around the uh, sprue, getting a little closer with a drumstick, removing the sprue, and then scraping out from the sc sprue a little material to make a cone-shaped pouring basin. And finally, making sure there are no high spots with the roller. I'm slamming the mold around a little to make it easier to separate and then removing the cope and putting it face down or top down. And next I'll be cutting a channel to feed metal from the sprue into the pattern. Once I've shoveled out a little material, I'm consolidating it with my finger, blowing it out. Then I'll remove the pattern and do a little further consolidation right there at that edge especially. That looks good. Turning it upside down to remove any loose sand. And reassembling, now we're ready to pour. This happens pretty fast, but the casting is good. The cavity inside the casting is good. There's a little nub on there because I put a vent in later and here are three finished castings. All of them turned out well. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your casting projects and may the swarf be with you.